Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and we are going to be unboxing a game called Role Player. This comes from Thunderworks Games and it's a dice game. Of course it's a dice game. It has the word roll inside of it and it says a dice game of fantasy character creation. It's exactly what you'll be doing in Role Player. This is a really popular solo game and has been of interest in the community for quite some time and I'm really hoping that I can shed some light on it for those individuals that have never heard of it before or missed it when it originally landed. Now there is an expansion that has come out, Monsters and Minions, which will add more content to this base game. But for now, we're gonna focus on just the base product. So we're gonna go ahead, flip this thing over, get a little more familiar with what role player is all about, and then we'll take a look at the components inside. Mighty heroes don't just appear out of thin air. They must be created. Race, class, alignment, skills, Traits and equipment are all elements of the perfect hero, ready to take on the opposition in the quest for glory and riches. In Role Player, you compete with your opponents to create the greatest fantasy adventure who has ever lived, preparing to embark on an epic quest. As you can see on the back of the box here, you got the designer listed in terms of the game design, graphic design, illustrators, the components are also listed and we will definitely be taking a close-up look at all of those it's labeled ages 10 plus one to four players so this is solo playable right out of the box and it takes about 60 to 90 minutes and for solo play it's on the lower end of the spectrum when you first open up the box to role player you're going to be greeted by the rule book and the rule book is about the same size as the box in terms of width and height and in terms of its thickness it's actually less thick than you would think this thing comes in at a total of 16 pages and on the very back of this rulebook has a really nice quick reference guide for the setup which contains steps 1 down to 13. The play sequence, roll, dice, market, and cleanup. Those are the four major phases you'll be going through during that play sequence. Really handy to have all that on the back of the rulebook and I'm loving that this is becoming the norm and has been the norm for quite some time but that individuals continue to use the back of rulebooks for these quick references. It's really handy because a lot of the things that people get stuck up on is the flow of the game and this really helps that become a lot clearer. So in terms of what it looks like inside the rule book, I'll give you an example of some of the pages so you can become familiar with what you're looking at in terms of a read. So we'll start from the very, very beginning. There is gonna be some illustrations throughout the rule book, of course, as you have a nice overview page here. And then you're gonna move into your character sheet where it's gonna specify your character sheet with letters tying into the numbers down below to let you know exactly what you're looking at. Race, class, alignment, attribute rows, backstory, market card areas, final scoring info, all that good stuff is all labeled here. And as you go through this rule book, you'll also notice that there's a lot of white space in here as well. So it's a large rule book in terms of width and height, but it's not so complex full of tons and tons of paragraphs of text that you're going to fall asleep reading it. I think this is laid out really nicely and I didn't have any issues going through this myself. So taking a look at this again, some more examples here, alignment cards, market cards, and there's illustra illustrations, I should say, throughout. Even here for this setup, if you wanna know exactly how you should be laying it out on the table, it's got that all laid out for you perfectly right there. So that's enough of the rule book that gives you a gist of what it looks like inside let's head over to the punch boards so of course being that this is role player and it's all about creating a character there's going to be many different types of characters that you're going to be able to choose from when you start your adventure and as you can see here this is going to be your player board if you choose to be the dwarf for instance you'll have your areas here for attributes which as you can see you'll be punching these all out because the dice will actually be slipping into all of these slots as you go through your gameplay you'll be dealing with strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma a whole bunch of different traits you'll be dealing with that have to do with the dice you've got class backstory your scoring reminders traits along the bottom here and some extra coins of course being that I like to kind of upgrade components, I will likely be finding some actual money to use instead of the cardboard tokens as I find it just feels so much better to use real coins. So this is the dwarf. And again, as we go through these, they're gonna be remain sim similar in terms of the layout, but of course the character will change. So now we have a halfling here as another option that we can choose from. Next we have the elf. Following this, we have the human. And the Dragonkin, that one's actually pretty cool. I like that one. An Orc, everyone loves being the Orc. 
And that's it for the classes, or I guess I'm not sure if they specify those classes or more so races in the game that you can choose from. And now we're getting into, well, what do you expect? It is role player. It's gonna have a ton of dice. And this is no slouch in that department. I mean, if you're looking to stock up on dice alone, this game has a ton of them in the box. It's craziness. And they're all color coded because they all mean different things. Not gonna get into that during the unboxing, but it is certainly cool to see that amount of dice because most games come with like six or so. So this thing is looking like there's probably somewhere around 30, like 20 to 30 dice in here easily. So we'll go ahead and move those off to the side for now. I will open that up and show you in a second, but we're gonna take a look at some of the things that are easier to get to off the top here, like this right here. And what do you need when you have a large bag or large game, I should say, with dice? You're gonna need a dice bag. So they do include that and it's a full size one. You get your entire hand in there, which is great. And it's gonna be definitely large enough to put all the dice inside, so that's good. And you've got some uh, Ziploc bags for all the uh, punching of tokens that you'll need to do as well. So now that we've gone through all the things that aren't in packaging, let's actually walk through all of the remainder of stuff here, which of course we got some cards to go through that are included in the game. A couple packs of those actually, and then some wooden cubes as well we'll have to take a look at. So we'll go through all these components right now. You can expect to find these wooden cubes inside of Role Player. There are two of each of them, white, red, purple, green, black, and blue. And of course it wouldn't be a dice game unless there were dice in it, and I can tell you right now there is a ton. This is a whole bunch sitting in the palm of my hand here of multiple different colors, and just behind it here is a bag that looks like I hardly took any dice out of it. Uh, there is a lot of dice, if I haven't emphasized that enough, inside of this core box. Now let's go ahead and take a nice close-up look at the artwork here as well as the abilities and iconography on the cards as we go through role players. So these are for the standard size cards. They look like this on the back and they even have exactly what they are. Market for instance for this one. So famous during final scoring, double the effect of your alignment card. There's some flavor text on the bottom here as well. Fame is nothing more than a fool's distraction. So that's kind of cool. They have a nice little snippet on each one of these cards. And again, the artwork is very uniform across these cards, which is nice. And they, it does look really good. Uh, and, and again, reading wise, you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever in terms of actually taking a look at the cards and being able to pick out the information that they've done a good job of spacing things as well as coloring things. Uh, there's gonna be a mix of cards here. So it might go from the market to something else very soon, but you can see these are all the types of things that you're gonna be able to equip onto your character hopefully if you get lucky enough some of these really nice ones um, as you go through role player and we're still in the market I will check the backs of these as we go it might all be market for all I know but uh, you've got move silently is that one yes move silently intimidate climb open the lock are we still in market yes we are wouldn't be surprised if all these are market then I really like the artwork though. It does pop off the cards and the cards do feel good quality as well. They don't feel cheap at all. So that's nice. Um, this is the kind of game though I'd probably end up sleeving though. There's not a ton of cards, so that won't be a problem. But yeah, there's some really, really good artwork here. And again, it all looks very uniform. You're not gonna be walking through this as we're going through it right now and finding a card that looks out of place. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the same artist was used across the entire set here because it's all very, very, uh, it flows very, very well. Now these, are these still? Yeah, looks like this literally is just a market deck. So that's pretty cool. And I imagine if you pick up the expansion uh, Monsters and Minions, and I hope it's not Minions and Monsters. I forget the title on that I could be wrong on, but I imagine that that would improve the market deck even more so. But you can see there's quite a bit of cards in there. So here are some nice reference cards to use while playing the game, one for every character. Of course, if you're playing solo, you're not gonna have to worry about that too, too much. We also have, oh, look at this. So we've got different breakdowns. Now this is my guess here is that this is gonna correspond to all the dice that you're gonna be slotting in on your player board maybe to start. So if you're the Aristocat, you're gonna basically be putting these dice in for each of your different traits uh, or skills that you have. And that's really cool if that's the case because it definitely helps you kind of create your character. You can see how different they all really are. So the Aristocrat, the Brawler, Chosen One, Craftsman, of course, all these different dice are gonna have different values. Some will be more powerful than others and I'll become more accustomed with that as I play it some more. Uh, that's really cool though that there's this many. There's a whole bunch here 
of totally different layouts. You really can get quite a different experience every single time you play this with the combinations of cards. I don't know what the exact breakdown is combination wise, but that's pretty impressive. There's at least 20 different ones there. Uh, Barbarian here, so you got your strength decks, uh, all the different attributes, an ability that maybe goes along with it. It looks like a die might come along with it as well. Uh, so that's kind of cool. The Druid, same thing. So this is actually really interesting. So there's a lot of customization going on in this thing, more so than I even thought to begin with. This I'm not too sure of. I did see this on the back of the box, if I'm not mistaken. This might be part of setup, but there's five spots here for five different dice. And uh, I don't know, they might be for holding them. Oh, it looks like you use them per player. So if you use them in a certain player counts, and then you remove them when you start going down in players. Interesting, interesting, interesting. On the back, nothing too different there either. So... Pretty, pretty cool. I don't know if there's any difference between the Barbarian in the front of this and the back. Oh, there is actually a difference. Oh, look at that. So there is other, there's another setup on the back side. I wonder if that's an upgrade. It looks like it would be an upgrade to this particular character. So maybe when they hit a certain rank, they go up or that could be a totally different one. So if I take a look at the Druid, for instance, and I flip this over, Ranger on the opposite side. Very interesting. So maybe there are double. I'll go ahead and actually show you guys the back sides of these ones because that could be interesting to see. So flipping these over, we've got the uh, sorcerer here on this side, a rogue, a cleric, a bard, a ranger, and a warrior. Makes me want to go back to the other deck we just went through and flip them over. But look at this, when you flip those ones over, the ones we went through earlier, these guys here, um, they actually just have a generic back here. So they're the backstory basically. Good to know, are they all backstory? Yes. All right, so that pretty much sums up the standard size cards in the game. And last but not least is the alignment cards. As you can see on the back of these cards, it says alignment right there. And you're gonna see alignment is broken up into four different sections. You have good, evil, chaotic, and lawful. And basically there's gonna be little stars with numerical values in them, whether they're negative or positive, and different alignments essentially. So if you're a protector, this will be your alignment. Again, that's really interesting because I'm guessing that's gonna change up how your character will either begin the game or maybe it's how they're gonna handle themselves throughout the game that's for me to find out you guys that have played this already can let me know in the comments below if you're aware of what this is and being that role players been out for quite some time now uh, this is probably pretty common knowledge to everyone but me at the moment for some silly reason I put this one on the back burner and definitely shouldn't have uh, this one has been talked about in solo circles for quite some time and that's gonna wrap up the unboxing for role player I really hope this video was informative and also gives you a good idea of what you can expect inside the box if you pick up role player thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo